This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I make a single-sided strap using a curve brush? So this question was sent along with an image. So I'm just going to load that image here quick. And the question is referring to creating a curve brush that's single-sided but also welded. So this could be used in creating hair cards or other areas on your model where you just want to apply single strips of geometry. So how can you go by doing that inside a ZBrush? So by default, when you create a curve brush, if the insert mesh is single-sided, it's not going to perform a weld when you create the curve brush. So I'm going to go through a few workflows to get you to the desired end result you're looking for. So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and I have a single plane of geometry loaded here. So with this, I'm just going to create a quick insert mesh curve brush. So I'm going to turn off perspective. I'm going to navigate up here to the brush palette. I'm going to do create insert mesh, and then click new to that. So now I have a new insert mesh of this single-sided poly. Now I'm going to go to the stroke menu over here. I'm going to go to curve, and I'm going to activate curve mode. And then I'm going to navigate over here to the tool palette, and I'm just going to select a sphere object, and then frame that quick, and turn off polyframes here. I'm going to increase my draw size, and I'm going to go to the brush palette, I'm going to dock this to the side over here. I'm going to open up this depth area, I'm going to change the embed to 5, just so you can see this here. And then I'm just going to draw the curve out on my model. So after you've created this and activated curve in the stroke menu, you should get something like this. So we're getting that single-sided polygon repeated across that curve, and you can see there's no welding happening in there. Well, if you navigate to the brush palette over here, I can turn on modifiers, and I can turn weld points on, and then if we redraw that curve out, you can see I'm still getting that same result. So since this was a single-sided piece of geometry, it's not going to weld the points on that mesh there. Now, if you turn on stretch and draw it out again, it may appear to be welded, but if you look closely at the endpoints here, you can see there is splitting through here. So one workflow you could do is make sure you have stretch and weld points on, draw it out wherever you want it on your model. After it's created like so, we can navigate to the subtool palette, go to split, do a split unmasked points, which is going to give us that curve as a new subtool. And then with this new subtool, if we divide this here, you can see that it is not welded, so they're all getting split like so. But if we go to the Geometry tab and go to Modify Topology, there is a Weld Points button here, and we can click that, and that will perform the weld across that curve. And now if we divide, you'll see that whole inner area is now welded except for the end caps. So that's one workflow you could do to generate a single-sided strap. So you just create your insert mesh brush as you like, and then just split it off and do this weld option here, and that will weld all the points in between those two end caps. So that's one workflow there. The next workflow you can do, so I'm just going to select this polysphere here, and I'm going to go to stroke, I can go to curve functions and just delete that old curve is you can navigate over here to the brush palette, and I'm going to locate the curve strap brush. So this curve strap brush, by default, is going to create a curve like so. And if we go back to the brush palette over here, you're going to see there's this brush modifier slider. And this is going to set how many sides this curve strap brush is going to have when it's generated. So if you change this all the way down to zero, and now draw this out, it's going to give you a double-sided strap here. Now the stepping on this strap here is controlled through the stroke menu. So if we go to the stroke menu up here and we open up that curve area, you have this curve step slider right here. So if I change this to say two and now draw this back out, you're gonna get a more squarish result for that insert mesh. And I'm gonna do the same process again, just split this off. So I'm gonna go to the subtool palette here, do split to unmasked parts. And now I'm going to select the new tool that's created. So using the curve strap with the brush modifier set to zero is going to generate this effect. So you have a double-sided strap selected. Now this one is welded, so if you go to the Geometry tab and you click Divide, you're going to see it's going to be welded like so. So you can use this process to generate double-sided straps on your mesh. 
Now, if you need them to be single-sided, you could switch to the Z Modeler brush. You could use that Alt functionality to tag one side of the strap there. And then hover over the poly, hold down spacebar, select the delete action. And then you can delete that back face, and now you're left with a single-sided strap. Now the final workflow is going to go to the PolyMesh 3D star here, and I'm going to go down to the Initialize tab and make a Q-cube. So I get something like this. And now from the side here, I'm going to select the Move Transpose Line, draw it out holding Shift, and then scale that in. So I get this little flat stubby cube here. Then we go to the draw option again. I'm gonna make sure I still have the Z modeler brush selected. I'm gonna hover over an edge and hold down Alt and click to remove that edge and hover over this edge and hold down Alt to remove that edge. So now I have something like this. Now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna make an open hole on the top here and on the bottom. So I'm gonna hold down Alt and select those top two polys. Hold down Alt, select the bottom two. And then I still have that delete a poly selected and I'm just gonna click there and that is now going to delete the two areas on that square there. And then on the back side, I'm just gonna insert another edge loop. This doesn't really matter uh, where it's gonna go. I'm just gonna place it like so. And now I have a poly on the front that contains no edge looping. The side contains one edge loop and the back contains one edge loop. Now with this, I'm just gonna assign some polygrouping here. So I'm gonna control W to polygroup everything one solid color. Then I'm gonna hover over the front poly here. And with that Z modeler brush still selected, I'm gonna hold down spacebar. I'm gonna select polygroup, make sure the target is set to single poly. And then I'm just gonna click that front poly there. So now I have this shape created. So now with this shape created, I'm gonna create a new insert mesh brush. Make sure it's framed like so. Go back to the brush palette, do create insert mesh, do new, go to stroke, activate that curve mode, go back to my tool with the polysphere here, frame that quick. I'm gonna draw that out. So you get something like this, I'm gonna increase my draw size and draw it out again. And now this time I'm gonna go to the brush modifiers again, and I'm gonna turn on weld points and stretch. And now if you draw it out, you're gonna get something like this. So you're gonna get a curve with a slight thickness there, but the entire thing is welded. Now if you change your depth, you can get this top poly to draw right on the surface of your mesh as you would if it was a single poly curve tool. So the embed value right now is set to 19, and that's just taking your distance from the top to the bottom of that insert mesh you created. So if I make this a negative, so I'm just gonna change this to negative 19 and click enter. And now if I draw this out, you're gonna get the result of that insert mesh, that top poly there, getting right to the surface. So this is probably more of what you're looking for if you're gonna be drawing out hair splines and different things on your mesh. So after you draw this one out, we now go to the subtool palette here to split unmasked points, select that new tool, and you'll notice now you have this shape, and you can see that the polygrouping has stayed from that initial tool. So if we just want this single-sided area, we just need to remove this other polygrouped section of this mesh. So to do this, we just hold Control and Shift, isolate once, click it again to hide it, and now we're left with a single-sided strap, and now we can go to the Geometry tab, do a Delete Hidden, and now we have a single-sided strap inside a ZBrush. So I usually end up using this third version of the process here. So creating a tool that looks something like this. And this allows me to draw it all over the mesh. And then after I'm happy with where that strap is positioned, I can just come through and select that polygrouping and then just remove it and it's just left with that single strap. So those are three workflows you can use inside a ZBrush to obtain that single strap effect you're looking for. If you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.